The film begins with this pretty lady named Pan Jin Lian, who is making some dough in her house. At that time, she has no idea that two guys are peeking at her through some cracks in the wall. They seem quite taken with Jin Lian because she's really attractive. Then there's this short and not so good looking guy, Wu Da Long, having a tough time carrying his stuff in the snow. When he sees those two guys spying on Jin Lian, he gets really mad. He scolds them and tries to shoo them away, letting them know that Jin Lian is his wife. But instead of leaving, these guys insult Da Long and give him a pretty bad beating. At that time, Jin Lian hears some noise outside her house and rushes out to find two guys beating up her husband. When they see how pretty Jin Lian is, they try to charm her into leaving her husband. But she gives them a look that scares them off, and they decide to leave. After those guys take off, Jin Lian helps her husband bring the stuff into their house. To get by, Da Long sells cakes at the market, and Jin Lian helps him out by making the cakes. Now they live in this little town called Yanggu and seem to have a pretty happy life together. Da Long usually has this young guy named Chen, who was helping him at the market, even though Chen can be a bit annoying sometimes. The next day, Da Long is at the market when he sees a bunch of people cheering for a warrior who had just beaten a fierce tiger in the forest. The hunters who saw it all take the warrior around the city, and they end up at the market. That's when he realizes that this big deal warrior is actually his younger brother, Wu Song. Soon after, Da Long spots Wu Song in the crowd and tries to call out to him, but it's tough since he's pretty short. So, Da Long climbs some stairs to be higher up and calls out again. This time, Wu Song hears him and wants to go over, but Da Long gets too excited, loses his balance, and takes a tumble down the stairs. Shortly after, Wu Song rushes over, happy to see his brother after such a long time. He didn't expect to find his brother in Yanggu, because he thought Da Long was living in Qinghe City. Then, Da Long explains that they had to leave Qinghe as people there were really mean to him and his wife. Soon after, Da Long invites Wu Song over, and Wu Song agrees, not minding the soldiers who were supposed to take him to some official's house. Once they get home, Da Long tells Jin Lian that his brother will be staying with them. Shortly after, Wu Song comes in with some wine, inviting Da Long to have a drink and celebrate their reunion. In his life, Wu Song really looks up to his big brother and wants to show respect to him and Jin Lian, since they're the only family he has left after their parents passed away. On the other hand, Jin Lian is really taken by Wu Song's good looks and bravery, especially learning that he's a great warrior and well respected. After having a drink, Da Long wants to spend some romantic time with his wife, but Jin Lian, who can't stop thinking about Wu Song, tells him to go to sleep. While she's making cake batter, she's all caught up in thoughts of handsome Wu Song and remembers the past when she was forced to marry Da Long. Back then, Jin Lian worked for an old nobleman named Yu Ming. He was attracted to Jin Lian and tried to harass her, but his wife walked in on them. Scared of his wife, Yu Ming blamed Jin Lian, saying she was trying to seduce him. Hearing that, Yu Ming's wife got really mad and punished Jin Lian by making her marry the least attractive guy in town, and it was Da Long. At that time, Jin Lian wasn't just forced into the marriage, but also had to deal with people making fun of her for being with Da Long. So, she asked him to leave town with her. Now back to the present, Jin Lian sees that Da Long is asleep and sneaks up on Wu Song, who's taking a shower. Seeing his strong, muscular body, she's even more smitten and can't help but try to touch him. Not long after, Wu Song found out about something unusual. Jin Lian, on her part, said she just wanted to help him wash up. Surprisingly, Wu Song wasn't like other men who were attracted to her beauty. He asked her to leave because he valued his dignity and honor. The next day, Wu Song planned to help Da Long sell cakes at the market. But then, some soldiers came and told him he was now the chief of police, responsible for keeping the city safe. Hearing that, Da Long was proud of his brother and encouraged him to take the job. The following day, Wu Song started working as a policeman and did a great job catching criminals. What was special about him was that he was not only strong but also polite and kind to people. People were grateful to him and often gave him gifts as a way of saying thanks. 
On the other hand, there was a rich guy named Shiman Ching. He was not happy with the prostitutes at the brothel he visited. The pimp there suggested he try something more challenging by pursuing someone else's wife. Shiman Ching liked the idea and thought his wealth would help him get any woman he wanted. The next day, as Wu Song was heading home, folks came up to thank him. When they called out his name, Jin Lian, who was folding clothes, got all excited and rushed to open the window to see him. But in her hurry, she accidentally dropped a piece of wood that hit Shiman Ching on the head. When he looked up, Shiman Ching was captivated by Jin Lian's beauty. He planned to return the wood and get to know her, but she closed the window instead. Soon after, an old lady named Wang Po told Shiman Ching that Jin Lian was married to a cake seller named Da Long, who was not very good looking. After hearing that, Shiman Ching thought he could win Jin Lian with his wealth, but Wang Po warned him that Da Long's brother was the police chief of the city. The next day, Shiman Ching went to a local official and bribed him to arrange for Wu Song to leave the city for a while. Meanwhile, Jin Lian made extra cakes so Da Long could sell them at the market longer. After Da Long left for the market, Jin Lian hurried to take a shower, dressed up, and put on perfume. She also prepared delicious dishes as if she was expecting someone special. Meanwhile, it was really cold because it was snowing, but Da Long was still eager to sell his goods to everyone passing by. Then Wu Song finished his work and went to help his brother, but Da Long turned him down. He told Wu Song to go home and rest because he had been working hard all night to keep the city safe. Wu Song listened to his brother and when he got home, he found Jin Lian waiting with delicious food. At first he didn't suspect anything, but when Jin Lian tried to get close, he realized she was trying to seduce him. When he tried to leave, Jin Lian hugged him tightly and wouldn't let go. Instead of being tempted, Wu Song got angry and pushed her away. He warned her that he wouldn't hesitate to harm her if he heard any bad rumors about him. Afterward, Da Long came home and Jin Lian, feeling frustrated because her plan had failed, tried to make up a lie about Wu Song harassing her. But Da Long didn't buy it cause he knew Wu Song's good character. This made Jin Lian even angrier, and she confessed to Da Long that she was embarrassed to have an ugly, short husband like him. Wu Song, upon hearing this insult to his brother, got furious and wanted to confront her. However, Don Long quickly stepped in, trying to defuse the situation. Soon after, a soldier arrived and informed Wu Song that he had to deliver something valuable to another city far from Yanggu City. The next day, Don Long accompanied Wu Song on his journey, not knowing it was part of Ximin Ching's plan to get rid of Wu Song from the city because he wanted Jin Lian, who was Wu Song's sister-in-law. Before leaving, Wu Song worried about his brother's safety and advised Da Long to be cautious because he'd be gone for several weeks and couldn't protect him. On the following day, Shi Ching approached Wang Po and asked for help in winning Jin Lian. Wang Po was initially reluctant, but Shi Ching bribed her with gold and promised even more if she'd assist in getting Jin Lian. Finally, Wang Po agreed to help Shi Ching. She then asked Jin Lian, who was skilled at sewing, to assist her in making clothes. So, Jin Lian started working as a tailor and went to Wang Po's place regularly. She was always sewing there. One day, while Jin Lian was checking some cloth, Shi Ching showed up, pretending to be surprised to see her, even though he had already planned this with Wang Po. Then, Shi Ching tried to strike up a conversation with Jin Lian, but she felt shy and walked away. The next day, Shi Ching came to Wang Po's place again and Jin Lian was asked to take measurements for clothes she was going to sew for him. At that moment, Shi Ching intentionally brought a box of jewelry and told Jin Lian to pick one as a gift for sewing his clothes. There, Jin Lian chose a hairpin but kept it hidden from her husband when she got home. Da Long advised her to come home once her work was done, but Jin Lian thought he was too strict and got mad at him. Not only that, she insulted Da Long and even blamed Wu Song for problems in their marriage. On the other hand, Wu Song and a group of soldiers tasked with delivering goods outside the city finally reached their destination. However, to their surprise, they arrived at the hideout of ruthless bandits. When one of the bandits tried to open a wooden chest, 
he instead launched an attack on Wusong. Luckily, he dodged the assault. And this led to a fierce battle as the bandits attacked Wusong and his companions. Fortunately, Wusong managed to fend them off, but he dropped the wooden chest he had brought from Yanggu City in the process. To his dismay, the chest contained only rocks. Wusong then realized that his assignment out of town was a plot to have him killed. As the bandit leader swung his sword at him, Wusong skillfully defended himself. However, a soldier behind him intentionally stabbed Wusong because he had been paid to do so. There, Wusong discovered that the mastermind behind all this was none other than Xinan Qing. This revelation fueled his anger, and he swiftly eliminated all the attackers. Meanwhile, in the following days, Jin Lian became increasingly drawn to Ximin Qing's seduction, especially because he was a handsome and wealthy man. Soon after Wang Po entered the room to ensure their plan was progressing smoothly. After leaving Jin Lian and Ximin Qing alone in the room, Wang Po locked the door to give them privacy. Ximin Qing then offered Jin Lian a drink, but she hesitated because she was still concerned about her status as Da Long's wife. On the other hand, Ximin Qing paid no mind to that concern and became even more forceful in trying to seduce Jin Lian. He didn't hold back and started touching her. At that time, Jin Lian attempted to escape but realized the room was locked. Soon after, Ximin Qing moved closer to her and attempted to kiss her, but she instinctively slapped him. He then tried to win Jin Lian over by claiming she was the only woman he'd ever love and promised never to leave her. Hearing this, she was swayed by her passion and gave in to do the unthinkable with Ximin Qing, even though it was forbidden. Shortly after, Wang Po entered the room, pretending to be surprised to find Jin Lian with Ximin Qing. There, Wang Po do their final plan by threatening to expose Jin Lian's immoral actions to others. Fearing disgrace, she begged Wang Po to keep it a secret. In response, Wang Po instructed Jin Lian to come to her whenever Ximin Chen needed her for intimate services. If she refused, Wang Po would reveal everything to Da Long and everyone else. Feeling trapped, Jin Lian reluctantly agreed to the arrangement. Not long after, when Jin Lian got back home, Da Long kindly advised her not to visit Wang Po too often because she was known to bring together men and women for secret affairs. Instead of feeling sorry and apologizing, Jin Lian scolded Da Long and told him not to meddle in her business. The next day, after Da Long went to the market to sell cakes, Jin Lian dressed up nicely and went to Wang Po's house to be with Ximin Qing. Unbeknownst to her, Chen, who was about to go to the market, saw Jin Lian entering Wang Po's house looking all fancy. Curious, Chen decided to see what she was up to. Then he climbed onto Wang Po's roof using a ladder to peek inside and was shocked to see Jin Lian do the unthinkable with another man. Soon after, Shen hurried to tell Da Long, who was at the market. Then, they both rushed to Wang Po's house. At that time, Chen was assigned to keep Wang Po occupied and out of the way, while Da Long wanted to find out if his wife was really having an affair. Shortly after, Da Long knocked on the bedroom door and called for Jin Lian. Inside the room, Jin Lian, who was in the middle of things, panicked when she heard her husband. However, Ximin Qing stayed calm when he opened the door, thinking Da Long wouldn't be an obstacle to him. On the other hand, Da Long was furious when he discovered his wife's affair. He tried to confront Ximin Qing, but Ximin Qing easily overpowered him and threw Da Long down the stairs, leaving him badly injured. Shortly after, Jin Lian, feeling guilty and fearful that Wu Song might harm her if she returned home, tried to apologize to Da Long. But Da Long was already upset and disappointed, so he refused to forgive her. In the meantime, Ximin Chen and Wang Po devised a plan to kill Da Long, and surprisingly, Jin Lian supported this deadly plot. The next day, Wang Po instructed Jin Lian to mix poison into a medicinal concoction meant for Da Long. Jin Lian then tried to convince him to drink it, but he declined because of his lingering anger towards her. At that moment, Wang Po intervened and informed Da Long that Jin Lian had been deceived by Ximin Qing, who had forced her to do the unthinkable with him. Upon hearing this, 
Da Long finally forgave Jin Leon and agreed to drink the medicinal concoction. However, he quickly realized something was off with the taste, but Wang Po insisted he continue drinking the poisoned mixture. Not only that, but Jin Lian and Wang Po also suffocated Da Long with pillows until he couldn't breathe and eventually passed away. One week later, Wu Song returned to Yanggu City, his body bearing the scars from a battle against bandits who had tried to kill him on Ximen Ching's orders. As he walked through the town, he noticed that people were deliberately avoiding him, as if something terrible had happened and he was no longer welcomed as a hero. Wu Song then encountered Chen, who appeared to be in a pitiful state due to torture inflicted by individuals acting on Shi Ching's orders to keep him silent about the truth behind Da Long's death. Chen eventually told Wu Song that Shi Ching was the mastermind behind all the misfortunes that had befallen Da Long and Wu Song himself. Upon hearing this, he hurried home and discovered that his brother had passed away. At that time, Jin Lian told Wu Song that Da Long had died from an illness, but he soon realized that Jin Lian had somehow caused his brother's death. The truth came to light, and it was evident that she was only pretending to mourn her husband's passing. Wu Song then consulted the official who had conducted an autopsy on Da Long's body, and the official confirmed that he had died from poisoning. Not long after, Wu Song discovered that Shi Min Ching was the mastermind behind his brother's death, the same person who had hired the bandits to assassinate him. He also realized that Shi Min Ching committed this murder to win Jin Lian's affections. Armed with evidence confirming the conspiracy, Wu Song returned home with two policemen who brought Wang Po before him as Shi Min Ching had conspired with Wang Po to kill Da Long. However, at that time, Wang Po defended herself alleging that Jin Lian was also involved in the murder, claiming that she had suffocated Da Long with a pillow until he stopped breathing. However, at first Jin Lian denied this but later confessed to Wu Song, expressing her frustration with having an unattractive husband like Da Long. She admitted to having an affair with Shi Min Ching because she wanted to change her life. Surprisingly, Jin Lian also blamed Wu Song for Da Long's death suggesting that if he had been willing to do something romantic with her, she might not have been interested in Xin and Ching, and Da Long might still be alive today. Upon learning this, Wu Song became even angrier and made it clear to Jin Lian that he would never be interested in a shallow woman like her, who judged everything solely based on looks. In his rage, he didn't hesitate to stab her as punishment for her role in his brother's death. Soon after, Wu Song took Jin Lian's body to Xi and Ching's residence. There, he managed to beat the guards at the door. He then entered the house and threw Jin Lian's body at Xi and Ching, who was reveling with women. Shortly after, Xi and Ching ordered his bodyguards to attack Wu Song, but Wu Song easily defeated them one by one until he faced Xi and Ching in a fight. Although Wu Song was clearly superior, Shi Ching had numerous bodyguards who surrounded Wu Song and attacked him simultaneously. However, with his exceptional combat skills, he managed to defeat all of Shi Ching's bodyguards and severely beat him. In the end, Wu Song killed Shi Ching to avenge his beloved brother, who had been murdered by Shi Ching and his associates. The film ends. The moral lesson from this film is don't try to steal someone's spouse or you will be dead.